So we were talking about safety stock in my previous video. I'm going to continue the safety stock part of it. The safety stock basically is a buffer for lack of flexibility. That means, as we talked about the two gallons of milk, the one extra gallon that you bought, just in case kind of about, this is the buffer. So in case uh, you run out of milk, you still have some more milk. That is the safety stock. Bull whip effect basically is, this is where we left off in the, whole, in the, in the previous video. Basically, when you have over a time period, over a time period you have let's say on the first day you want so much of um, milk and the second day you are thinking you want to buy some more milk and the third day your demand is not that much the fourth day uh, it's a little bit and the fifth day you want a few more because you have some visitors coming and the sixth day uh, you don't you're not buying anything this kind of a demand variability in demand is what is known as bull whip effect so <clears throat> when companies give their uh, products demand to another company for instance Walmart is buying let's say loaves of bread uh, from a company from a baker and this over a period of time, Walmart is telling them, hey, I need uh, 10 loaves today, I need 50 loaves tomorrow, I need 30 loaves the day after. This variability, this kind of variability is given, but then the problem is, it is not accurate. So the information that the company is giving, Walmart is giving to its bakers, is sort of distorted, simply because you really don't know when, how much you need, that is number one. Number two, how many loaves are going to be made by the manufacturer? And what kind of um, suppliers, uh, what, what problems they have in giving, let's say, wheat and salt and uh, flowers and things like that to the baker? That is another. So everything gets distorted over a period of time. And that is the bull whip effect. Okay. So for instance, I have the same thing like this is something similar to the Nike that we talked about before. So in the same the same context, if I have um, the three to the tier two suppliers giving uh, is uh, given information about how many is needed, the tier one is given needed so much. And the, and the manufacturer needs so much of demand and the distributor and the retailer and the customer needs so much. See the variability in this, the variability in the information. So you can see that this tier three suppliers is totally different than this variability for the customer, which is totally different than the rest retailer, which is totally different than the distributor. And you can see that over a period of time when you're going this way, the information goes this way, and the products come this way. Okay, the products goes from upstream to downstream, whereas information goes from downstream to upstream. Because this customer, for instance, uh, Roosevelt University, might say, "I need only, uh, you know, sixty Nikes to sell in my uh, stores." But then the retailer will have, you know, maybe thousand or something like that. They want thousand because they need many, they have many customers like Roosevelt. Whereas the distributor will have many retailers, whereas the manufacturer will have multiple distributors, so on and so forth, right? And that information is going to be passed on from one to another. And there is a distortion in that. That is the bulbic effect. Supply chain management has got different softwares. A supply chain planning systems and supply chain execution execution systems these are two main ones the planning systems has got they have models that support the supply chain that enables demand planning optimizing various sources and things like that it has manufacturing plans uh, it has got inventory levels established 
and also logistics and transportation for both inbound and outbound logistics for both both inbound and outbound supply chain execution systems manage the flow of products through distribution centers and warehouses so basically everything which is denoted here is your the the um, the execution systems so anything that is going downstream that has got these supply chain execution systems okay global supply chains they have issues the issues are very geographical in nature very uh, time differences uh, the participants are from multiple countries they have different legal requirements in various countries and uh, they have performance standards which are different in various countries so that there, there are a lot of supply chain issues the internet actually helps to reduce and manage these complexities because uh, the internet helps to put together various warehouse management transportation logistics outsourcing so on and so forth as well as reduce these or manage these global complexities so when you talk about supply chains you have what are called demand driven supply chains that means basically you have push based models and pull based models push based models are built to stock so these are like i'm going to make a uh, thousand cars and i'm going to keep it in the distributors all over the us and let them sell the cars that is the push base model a pull base model basically is i go to a customer goes to the web and he designs a car and then says hey i want this particular car this particular model these kind of features in it so that is a pull base and so when the customer demands that then the the company or the automobile company can put together a new car for them internet enables move from sequential supply chains to concurrent supply chains because complex networks of suppliers can adjust immediately okay and this is a push based model and this is a pull based model and you can see that the the pull based model is just the opposite of the push based model so in the in the push based model you have uh, production based on certain forecasts and these forecasts are told to the suppliers these forecasts or demands are given to the suppliers once the manufacturer manufactures these products then they are sent to the distributors on forecast which is inventory based forecast the retailers are looking for how to stock them so they stock it and then the customers purchase what is on shelves this is like a regular push based model that you can see in walmart and target and so on and so forth whereas a pull based model works just in one direction because you have when a customer places the order then the the stock is replenished how does it replenish because they get it from warehouse distributors and the distributor says well i don't have this so they produce to order and this when they say produce to order the manufacturer says hey i want this and this and that and this feature and that features i need to buy these things so i'm going to go to the suppliers to get this so pull based models are one way around whether it's push based model or the other way around the internet has changed these uh, supply chains basically simply because of its flexibility and also that you can connect to anybody so you can see this you have manufacturers who are virtual who are contract manufacturers and private industries net marketplaces a chain logistic exchanges and all these different things are going to be there so basically exchanges where like a ebay kind of a thing or like a amazon kind of a thing whereas the net marketplaces are like uh, amazon or their own companies like tesla and things like that and also uh, the there, there are the, in the real world distributors are there the retailers are there the manufacturers are there as well
So you have both the virtual as well as the brick and mortar kind of companies that are all pulled pull together in an emerging internet driven supply chain. The business value of supply chain is that um, you match supply to demand. You reduce the inventory levels. You improve the delivery service. You speed the production, pro, the, the production time, the product time to market. And you use the assets very effectively and you increase sales. So supply chain is pretty good because if you have a great, very good supply chain or a very good supply chain management system, then you have a good business value. Next thing we want to do is to talk about CRM, which is CRM is customer relationship management. The idea of the central idea of customer relationship management is to know the customer. So what happens is in a big business like uh, General Motors or or um, or Amazon or anybody like that, you have a lot of customers. You have too many customers. And then there are lots of ways your company interact with these customers. There are certain companies like Whirlpool who do not know their customers at all. The reason being Whirlpool sells their products to Sears or um, Best Buy and things like that. And the customers actually go to Best Buy or Sears to buy Whirlpool products, not directly to Whirlpool. So actually Whirlpool do not know what their customers are really like. So basically the customer, but they can access the Best Buy or Sears data or information about their customers so that they can understand their customers. So for that, Best Buy as well as Sears and all that, they need CRM systems, okay? CRM, and actually Sears is pretty much going away or part of it has gone away. So I'm just using it as an example. Maybe Target could be another example or a JCPenney or Macy's, any of those companies also, uh, or, many, or Amazon, any one of them. They have what are called customer relationship management systems. These customer relationship management systems, a Salesforce is a salesforce.com is a very uh, common and uh, highly regarded as, and also a popular kind of CRM. CRM systems capture customer data. They integrate the customer data. They consolidate the customer data. They let you analyze the, the customer data. They give you tools to analyze the customer data. And also um, they distribute this information, the customer information, to various systems and various touch points across the enterprise and provides a single enterprise view of customers. So basically, if I'm a sales guy and I need to know a customer that to whom you sold, then I would know through the CRM, this is what you sold and so I can get more information from the customer so that I can use that customer to sell my product as well. Remember, both you and me work for the same company. So we should be sharing these information, right? And that's what the whole idea is. Customer relationship management basically has got sales, service, and marketing. These are the three huge sectors inside the customer relationship management systems. So basically the sales can be telephone sales, web sales, retail store sales, field sales, so on and so forth. Service can be through a call center, through a self-service center, wireless data, field service, social networking, all these are service kind of entities. Whereas marketing you have various campaigns of marketing. So you have data coming from various campaigns, the content of it, the content of the, the products and things like that in the web systems as well as anywhere else and the data analysis that goes on with the marketing. So customer relationship management in, comprises of sales, service and marketing data. And let's continue uh, in the next video.